Hello and welcome to the AI with Arun show. Imagine Sarah, it's 2 a.m. She has a massive 10 page essay due tomorrow morning on the economic causes of the civil war. She is exhausted, stressed, and staring at a blank screen. Then she remembers Chat GPT. With one prompt, she gets a perfectly structured, perfectly worded draft in 60 seconds. She hits submit. Now ask yourself did Sarah finish her assignment efficiently? Absolutely. Did Sarah learn anything? That, my friends, is the billion dollar question that has fundamentally changed education forever. And that is the topic of this video today. AI in the classroom, from elementary to college. How much of AI is just the right AI? And how much of AI is too much AI? What we are experiencing is not just a new tool. It's a seismic shift in the way learning works. Historically, education was a simple binary, the teacher and the student. Today, it's a complex teacher AI student dynamic. The AI is now a permanent third party in the classroom, whether we like it or not. The urgency is now, this is not theory. The change is happening fast. Research shows that high school students use of generative AI for schoolwork jumped from 79% to 84% in just five months in early 2025. Nearly 69% are using tools like ChatGPT for assignments. The system is already operating in a post-AI reality. What should our goal be? We must move beyond the old debate of banning versus embracing AI. Instead, we must adopt a human-centered approach. Our primary goal is to ensure the student remains the epistemic agent, a fancy term meaning the one doing the real thinking, not just the prompter of a machine. The core tension in education today is between efficiency and cognition. AI is amazing at increasing the efficiency of the deliverables, that essay or code block. But education is not about the final product. It's about the process of creation. To learn deeply, our brains need desirable difficulties, tasks that require effortful struggle to encode knowledge into long-term memory. When a student chooses AI to skip that struggle, say asking a chat GPT to summarize a complex text or generate the answer to an equation, that is cognitive offloading. We are outsourcing our executive functions to the machine. The consequences are alarming. A study by the MIT Media Lab looked at young adults writing essays with AI. Yes, the essays were faster and more polished, but here is the scary part. The student's brain activity in key regions associated with cognitive engagement was markedly lower compared to those writing without AI. This reliance can act as a leveler, potentially lowering the ceiling for high achievers by discouraging original divergent. When have you crossed the line into too much use? It's simple. The threshold is crossed when the AI performs the core, core cognitive function of the assignment. If the goal was to structure an, an argument and the AI generated the outline, the learning opportunity is gone. To fight cognitive offloading, we have to change the game. Since AI can easily handle the lower level skills, like remembering and understanding, our focus in education must shift dramatically to higher order thinking skills. So what should the new st student's new role be? The student is no longer just a retriever of facts. They must become the evaluator of outputs. In the create stage, the student is no longer the sole generator. They are the curator and the architect. You prompt the AI for components, but you are responsible for assembling and refining them into a cohesive whole. The line is crossed if the AI generates the final products without your significant architectural input. In the evaluate stage, which is crucial, the student must become the ethical auditor. You must assess AI outputs for three things, bias, hallucination, and logic, and verify citations against primary sources. If you accept the AI's judgment without checking it, that's crossing the line. Now let's look at the analyze phase. You learn or you use the AI to identify patterns, but you must become the contextualizer, interpreting those patterns within the specific historical or cultural context that the AI cannot grasp. The SAMR model, we must use AI for redefinition, not substitution. Substitution is just doing the same old thing with less effort, like using AI to write a paper. Redefinition is using AI to do new, harder things that were previously impossible, like a history his student using AI to rapidly build a functional app that maps historical data points. The SAMR model that we're talking about in this stands for substitution, augmentation, modification, redefinition. 
It offers a lens to evaluate the integration of technology in the context of AI. Substitution is often where the damage to learning occurs. If AI is used simply to substitute for the student's writing process, for example, generating a paper, it is functionally detrimental. However, redefinition represents the ideal. This occurs when AI allows the students to perform tasks that were previously inconceivable. So another example, a student with no coding background using AI to build a functional app that solves a community problem, that represents a redefinition of what is possible in a social studies or civics class. The goal is to give students usage away from substitution, doing the same thing with less effort, towards redefinition. Let's start with our youngest learners. For elementary students, which is from grades one to six, the rules are fundamentally different. So the developmental reality is that students in grade one through six are in the concrete operational stage. They are still developing basic logic, but crucially, the executive functions like impulse control and judging if a source is credible are still very new. The safety imperative implies that unstructured interaction with open AI models like ChatGPT is generally inappropriate. There are risks of hallucinations. Open models are prone to hallucinations, which is when they confidently state a falsehood as a fact. Imagine a first grader learning a wrong scientific fact from a robot that they trust. The second risk is about privacy. Strict laws like COPPA, COPPA in the US prohibit collecting data from children under 13, which is why most commercial AI platforms bar them. The third risk is the world garden. Therefore, the overarching strategy for elementary education is the world garden approach. All AI interaction must happen through highly filtered education-focused apps or through teacher-mediated experiences where the adult acts as a human in the loop. So how do young kids use AI safely and productively? So the first point is about adaptive learning. The best use is embedded in programs like Khan Academy Kids or Prodigy Math. These platforms use AI to adjust the difficulty of math or reading tasks in real time. If the student struggles with the concept, the AI serves up remedial steps. If they ace it, the AI accelerates them. This system leverages powerful learning concepts like the spacing effect, ensuring they review information just before they forget it, leading to robust retention. Since these are closed curated systems, the risk of hallucinations is minimal. The second point is about the magic illustrator. AI can serve as a creative engine. A teacher can take a student's written story and input the descriptive sentences into a safe image generator, like Little Let. The class watches how changing a single word, say swapping gloomy forest or sparkling forest, changes the visual output. This teaches the power of vocabulary and descriptive language without replacing the foundational skills of writing the story. The third one is about the why game, which is the verification. The teacher can use the LLM, the large language model, as a class guest to answer questions like how do whales sleep? The critical step is then asking the class, how do we know if this is true? The class then verifies the AI's answer using approved books, inoculating students against blind trust in algorithmic authority and introducing the concept of hallucination early. Now, when is the threshold crossed? The line is crossed when AI substitutes foundational skill acquisition. AI must not replace the physical act of handwriting and developing fine motor skills. It also must not solve basic arithmetic problems before the student establishes number sense. Now we move to adolescence, the co-pilot era, which is talking about grades 7 to 12. Now this is where usage explodes with over 80% of high schoolers already using Gen AI. The strategy must shift from protection to guided autonomy. A band-centric approach fails because it drives usage underground. Our job is to teach AI literacy, how the tools work, what the ethical implications are, and where their limitations lie. AI is incredibly helpful for overcoming the blank page syndrome. Let's take an example. A student can ask the AI, give me 10 potential essay topics about the economic cause of World War I, focusing on lesser known factors. The student selects and refines one. This is augmentation. The AI provides options, but the student retains the executive choice. We must teach our students to use AI transparently in drafts. The student writes the initial outline and the core thesis statements. The student uses AI to find relevant sources, suggest counter arguments. For example, what would a critic say about my thesis or check for clarity. And then the student synthesizes all the feedback, writes the final draft and adds a process note explaining exactly 
how they use the AI. Now, this whole method that you see from the top bun to the meat or the hybrid or something vegan, if you're vegetarian or vegan, to the bottom bun, it's called the sandwich method for writing. In STEM and writing, the most critical learning happens in the feedback loop. So let's talk about the debugging rule first. If a student relies on AI to generate perfect code, they skip learning logic and syntax. But the rule is this. Students must write the initial code themselves. When it inevitably fails, they paste it into the AI with a very specific prompt. Explain why this code is failing and give me a hint. Do not write the fixed code for me. The AI acts as a personalized tutor, explaining the logic line by line, which builds understanding rather than bypassing it. AI tools like Brisk Teaching or Kanmingo can act as a tireless editor, drastically reducing the time it takes to get feedback. Before submitting to the student, to the teacher, the student submits the draft to the AI. Review my essay again, this rubric. Do not rewrite it, but tell me which three areas need the most improvement. This allows the students to iterate multiple times, resulting in a higher quality final submission and a deeper understanding of the criteria. The biggest risk for teenagers using AI is losing their authentic voice. AI writing is often smooth, balanced, and generic. When students use AI to heavily edit their work, they strip away the unique styles and idiosyncrasies and personality that mark their developing identity. So we can't stop the students from using AI, but we must change how we assess them. We must focus on validating the process of learning. We need to shift the grade distribution. Instead of the final paper being 100% of the grade, we should make the process, which are the outline, the drafts, the AI interaction logs, worth 50%. This clearly signals that we value the work of learning over just the final artifact. High stake assessments must still be done in class, on paper, or on lockdown devices, for example, kiosk mode. This ensures the student has a baseline internalized competency. The Viva, the order of defense, is the ultimate AI resilient strategy. Implement random spot checks where a student is asked to explain a specific paragraph or a claim. An example could be like this. Why did you use the word juxtaposition in this sentence? If the student cannot answer or explain the concept, it's a clear evidence of uncritical AI reliance. It's essentially unhackable. The final thing, we must teach high schoolers to sanitize their prompts. They are prone to oversharing, so they must be trained to remove names, school details, and specific situational data before interacting with public AI models. Now let's talk about college and university. In higher education, the game changes again. The goal shifts from learning the basics to knowledge creation and preparing for professional workflows. Now, what are professional expectations? Employers now expect graduates to be proficient in AI tools. The environment is moving towards an AI inclusive with disclosure model. Use is allowed, but it must be transparent and cited. The second thing to remember is the research assistant. Now, AI is legitimately revolutionizing research. Traditional keyword searching is slow, but semantic search tools like Elicit or Consensus are powerful. So what does the workflow look like? A student can ask a natural language question, and the AI analyzes thousands of scholarly papers to find relevant matches, even without exact keywords. It can even generate tables comparing the methodologies of different papers. The critical guardrail, remember this rule. AI is for discovery, not comprehension. The student must read the actual papers identified by the AI. Relying solely on AI summaries is insufficient for graduate level work and risks propagating errors. AI cannot yet write a high quality nuanced literature review without hallucinating citations. If secondary education is about logic and voice, higher education is about synthesis. Writing a dissertation or a thesis is difficult because synthesis is difficult. It requires holding multiple contradictory ideas in your mind and resolving them. If AI performs the synthesis, the student has failed to learn how to think at a doctoral level. In STEM, AI acts as an indispensable junior analyst. So what is acceptable use? It's fine to use AI to write boilerplate code for a data visualization like a Python script using pandas. This lets the student focus on interpreting the data and drawing meaningful conclusions rather than memorizing complex syntax. And what should the check be? Students must still be able to audit the code. Blindly running AI-generated code can lead to incorrect statistical models or security vulnerabilities. AI models are trained on the average of internet text. If you rely too heavily on them, they produce average content, a regression to the mean. High-level academic work required novelty and breakthrough thinking. Over-reliance on AI actively suppresses 
this original thought. So the era of traditional plagiarism detection is over. Tools like Turnitin are struggling, often flagging honest work as AI written, which are false positives, or missing subtle AI paraphrasing, which are false negatives. We must fundamentally evolve our assessment. For essays, an AI resilient strategy could be version history and audit. Forget the final document submissions. Now require work in Google Docs or similar platforms like Microsoft Word documents with version history turned on. So why does it work? Massive copy paste or generating an entire paper in the last hour are instantly visible, proving that the work was not completed through a deliberate process. If you have exams, you know, let's have blue book exams for ensuring a true baseline of knowledge, proctored in person, handwritten, or using locked browser exams guarantee that the student's internalized knowledge is being tested without digital aid. If their projects prevent last minute generation by requiring staged submissions, instead of just the final product, require the proposal, the annotated bibliography, the outline, the craft along the way. This forces engagement with the process over weeks. And if it's an oral defense, the viva is essential. A quick five minute oral interview on any submission proves mastery. If a student truly understands the material, they can speak about it eloquently. It's entirely hackable. The integration of AI is a permanent structural change, not a temporary trend. The question is not one of technology, but of pedagogy. So let's summarize the three roles. We have defined the role of AI based on the student's developmental stage. For the elementary student, grades one to six, AI is a curiosity engine, strictly guided by the teacher within a protected environment ensuring foundational skills are not replaced. For the middle school and the high school, students grade 7 to 12, AI is a co-pilot used to brainstorm and debug, but strictly subordinated to the student's voice and logic. For the college student, I read, AI is a research assistant, enabling complex synthesis and data analysis, provided the student maintains rigorous epistemic oversight and transparency. The shift in mindset educational institutions must move away from a police state model, constantly trying to catch cheating to a process validation model. If we assess the student's ability to defend, to explain, and to critique their work, the tool used to create the draft becomes secondary. The real danger is not the tool itself, but the surrender of human agency to it. We must teach students to use this incredible technology, but they must always remain the captain of the ship. Even as the co-pilot becomes increasingly sophisticated, we must use AI to protect and enhance human agency not replace it. With that, we come to the end of the show. Please support our work by joining us as a member. All you have to do is go to the description of this video. At the very bottom, you will see a link to becoming a member. And if you learned anything in this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the AI with Arun show. Thank you for watching.